Hi, this is Craig at the Caddis Fly Shop in Eugene, Oregon. Today we're going to be tying a classic pattern for all trout fishermen. This is a um, PT, the old um, pheasant tail nymph. As you can see, it's going to be a little variation today than your classic pheasant tail. We're going to be using some CDC to give it a really beautiful motion while it's drifting in the water. And we're also going to be using a jig hook um, with a 60 degree bend along with a slotted tungsten bead from Hairline. And uh, let's go ahead and get this going. I'm using a 140 denier uh, Danville brown thread. And I'm going to be tying um, this fly today in brown. But I recommend different shades of brown, different shades of olive, and different shades of tan uh, for this fly. Very similar to the different colors I would recommend using a hair's hair. So I'm laying down my uh, brass wire, and this is a size small by the way, uh, just on the side there. And then I'm going to be grabbing about, I don't know, four to six of these different barbs off of this brown pheasant tail fiber. Try to keep the tips aligned, and you want your tail to be about three quarters of the length of the hook. And you can just measure it using this. And using a pinch wrap, transfer your thread right, right beyond the hook point. These are barbless hooks, which I like to fish with. Um, if there were a barb, you'd take your thread right to your barb. We're going to do a couple of loose pinch wraps. Make sure our tail's looking okay. And that looks pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and lock that down. And then I'm going to have a couple of wraps in front of that pheasant tail. Now there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can run your thread all the way to the bead if you want to uh, and lock it off. Uh, you can also just keep that thread in front of your pheasant tail the entire time. And when you make your first wrap, try your best to try to cover that back wrap. And as you move this forward, you're moving your thread. And what that's doing, that's actually securing this down as we move along. Nice and tight. And I'm gonna take that up to the front of the bead. And I'm going to lock that off. Now I'm not going to be putting any type of wing case on this today, but you could put a wing case if you wanted to use this pheasant tail. You could tie it back and then back over itself. And then carefully grabbing your wire, I'm going to do some counter wraps. And the counter wraps will really lock in that pheasant tail. that in with a couple of good turns. And you can go ahead and spin that off if you need to, or cut it off. One thing that I love on all of my jig flies is CDC. Uh, this is a material that the Americans discovered in the 1980s after coming back from New Zealand. Um, this feather comes off of the, let's just say the rear end of the chicken. And so you have a lot of glands there and in those glands you have a lot of oil. So this is a very oil, uh, very oily f um, feather, but it has a lot of beautiful movement. And when you buy these, um, it's so much better nowadays, but you really want a very dense fiber um, if you can find it like that. But I'm gonna tie this in just by the tip and I'm gonna kinda use the feather itself to measure the length, and this is gonna act as a wing or legs. Um, I like them to go slightly beyond or just to about the hook bend. Um, some of my flies I'll even go bigger than that or longer. But I'll just tie this in by the tip, lock it in there with a few wraps. I like pushing it back, lock it off again, that way it just doesn't pull out. We've got to wrap this. Um, you can use hackle pliers if you have them. I don't need them because I just don't have them right now. 
Uh, but I'm going to do about one to three turns. This doesn't need to be super dense, but um, that's just personal preference. I'm going to lock that in. Stroke those fibers back. Cut off that. Stroke the fibers back. Lock them in. If you have any oddball little strands, just go ahead now and pull them off if you need to. But as you can see, my CDC goes slightly beyond my hook bend. That's how I like it right there. It's a lot of action while it's floating in the water. And then I'm just gonna take some ice stub. You can use brown. Uh, in this case though, I'm gonna be using pheasant tail color. I just take a small little pinch of this stuff. And when you put on ice stub, put it on in small quantities. Much easier to manage it. If you put it on in one big clump, it's a lot harder to remove it. And then I'm just going to wrap that, make a small collar. And with a little bit of ice stub uh, still on the thread, I'm gonna go ahead and do a four to five uh, turn whip finish. I don't have my whip finishing tool right now. I'm not very good at doing it by my hand. But since I am going to be gluing this, I'm just gonna do two half hitches, like so. I'm gonna cut the thread out. You can trim any of this eye stub if any of it's just too long, but I like that look. I like that really buggy look when it's floating, a lot of, a lot of movement. And then I'm gonna take some hard as whole just apply a small amount right on top of the bead and thread. Looks like I got a little. Let that dry, and uh, there you go, guys.